Today I'm in one of my greenhouses and I noticed that I've got a bit of an aphid problem developing now. In the summertime, this is something that is just a reality for most farmers. And in this video, I wanna to explain to you guys how I go thermal nuclear on aphids while keeping it organic. That's coming up. All right, before we start today's video, I just wanna remind you guys that I vlog daily at fromthefield.tv and it's where I post 99% of the content that I create. So if you're interested in that, you wanna see my daily vlogs, you wanna see all the development that I've done on this homestead over the last, over a year, that's where they all are, from the field.tv. You can sign up for seven days for free without any obligation. If you don't like it, just cancel, no problem, you won't be charged. All right, so what do I mean by going thermal nuclear? So obviously I'm being a little bit facetious there, but, um, not entirely, there is a thermal element to this. So I've got a new technique, which is kind of has a long backstory in a way because I've always done a little bit of these things. So there's a trifecta here. The first is to use high pressure water to knock off the soft bodied insects. Second is to use some flame to burn the aphids that have fallen on the soil that I've knocked off the plant with my high pressure water. And the third is to use safer soap to spray down the plant. Now, I know there's going to be some armchair quarterbacks out there that are going, well, Curtis, if you have problems with aphids, that surely must mean that you have a problem with your soil and you shouldn't have aphid problems if you have perfect soil. It's like, yeah, okay, bud, you still get aphid problems from here and there. And frankly, this is new soil. So actually, I do have problems in that I have to find the right equilibrium to this soil and these things take time. So, so now that I've addressed the armchair quarterbacks out there, I know there'll be more comments of people think they, they know it all and all that, but you can't really avoid that here on YouTube. So um, the three elements are, let me just show you. First of all, we've got our water. Now I've been doing this for years and this has always been my strategy to knock back aphids. And on all, most of my garden hoses on the property, my farms or homesteads, I always have these dram on and off valves. They're uh, either brass or aluminum and they're really good quality. And they just make it so that you have an end to your hose that you can couple on another whatever you need. But the, the, the valve itself actually is, is quite useful on its own. You can use it for spraying things down or whatever. But what I really like about them is that you can dial this a little bit and you get this really fine spray, which is very useful if you want to spray the plant to knock off aphids because it's high pressure, but it doesn't have a lot of flow. So it doesn't actually damage the plant. That's the first part of it. And what I do is I go around and I spray the inside of the plant. Now, this aphids go, go on a lot of different plants. Uh, my biggest problematic plants for aphids are peppers and kale. In my climate, you know, everybody's got different types of aphids depending on where you're at, and they might gravitate to certain plants or whatever. But usually, the aphid will start to cluster in the center of the plant. So in this pepper plant here, for example, these plants have been blown out, so you don't actually, you won't see a lot of aphids in here right now, but they'll start to cluster in the center where the new growth is. And that's where we go and spray. So we take our spray, um, and in this video, I'm kind of, I'm holding the camera at the same time. Uh, but anyways, I go in and I spray around the inside of the plant, which essentially knocks the aphids off the plant. Now that actually does quite a bit to harm them because they are a soft bodied insect. So they actually get kind of screwed up when, when, when you knock them off and not all of them will actually make their way back. You can just imagine climbing a tree and all of a sudden you get blasted with a fire hose and you get knocked off the tree. It would be fairly debilitating, but they do come back. And so that's the first step is knocking them off the plant. And so I go around with my sprayer and I go and I hit up all the plants, uh, pretty much just all of them, because if you're seeing aphids on one or two plants, chances are they're everywhere. Now in this greenhouse, <clears throat> 
the only problematic things that I have for aphids are these peppers. They don't get in the cannabis. They, they don't typically get in tomatoes, but I have seen them in tomatoes before, but uh, they don't seem to be interested in the tomatoes right now. Uh, and and uh, I've got some celery in here, not an issue for, uh, I've got some basil right now, uh, here too, which uh, isn't an issue at the moment, though uh, aphids can get into basil. So anyways, I go around and I knock off all those aphids. And then step two is our thermal element, which is to use a flame. And uh, I've done this at various different scales in the past. And, and one that, um, w w the way I used to do this on the farm was um, when I would crop out kale. And then I would, um, so typically what I used to do was I would crop out all my kale in the summertime because the aphid pressure just became too much and kale sales slowed down in the summer. And so I felt, didn't feel it necessary to fight them. Some people would, and, and this technique could, could work for this as well. But the, th this is how I discovered the flame is I would uh, crop out my kale by cutting it at the base of the soil, not disturbing the soil, and then just removing the plant. And then I noticed all the aphids were just sitting there on the soil. And so I used to just take out my flame weeder and just torch that to just so that whatever I planted next, I wasn't planting into a, a bed of aphids. And so it's the same idea here. So after we've done our spray, what I do is I go around the plant and I'll use my left hand to hold up the leaves of the plant like this while my right hand takes the torch. And I just go in and I'm just... Just quickly passing over, the, the, these aphids are pretty sensitive, and they're also uh, also at a very vulnerable moment, and I go around and just torch the soil. And it doesn't even burn my drip irrigation lines because I'm not holding it anywhere for very long. It's just passing over, and you just see these little guys curl up, and they die really quickly. So that's the thermal element. I'm just going around, and I'm just getting all those aphids on the ground. And so really all that's happening here is I'm just reducing the numbers. So I've knocked them off, made them vulnerable. Then I come in, burn what's left, and, and that's not going to be all of them. And so from there, I come in with my safer soap. Now this is just a <clears throat> standard uh, organic way of mitigating pests. And safer soap, really, all it does is... Um, create sort of a sticky film on the plant that the bugs don't like to crawl around on. It's not really an insecticide. I know some people call it an insecticide, but it's not really. Um, if it really was an insecticide, it probably wouldn't be organic. But um, so, you know, and from there, um, we just spray the plant down. And so really what I'm doing here is coming in and spraying in the center of the plant and I get all around it, I get underneath it, and I want to get all along the stem so that they don't want to crawl back up on the plant. Now, this isn't a way to completely eliminate aphids, but this is going to really, really slow down their development. And I might have to do this again, but uh, that's kind of how, you know, organic methods when it comes to pests aren't really a complete sure bet you know it's not like spraying a real insecticide that just nukes everything but also kills you because now you're going to eat that stuff so that's not what we're going to do but this will really really knock these guys back and i actually did this last night and uh i'm just coming in here and looking to see you know how many of these aphids came back? Oh, there's there's one little one there on that leaf. Um, these were, they were pretty clustered. There was a lot of them on here. And so we've really, really reduced their numbers and uh, also made an environment uh, with the safer soap that they're really not that um, keen on. They're not really, uh, it, it, it's not, it's not something that they're gonna thrive in now. So I'm just looking at some of these guys that uh, got their treatment last night and it's all looking pretty good so that's how i go thermal nuclear on aphids now again this can work on any plant any plant that gets aphids it's the same thing 
and um, you know, it's uh, you can do one, two, or three of these things. Yeah, uh, I used to just go and spray them to knock them back, and I just do that every week. Um, but doing it this way means that I don't have to do it every week because this is going to really, really inhibit their growth. So if you guys liked that content, if you want to see more of this, check out from the field.tv. Again, that's where I post 99% of the videos that I make. And we have many other great content creators there and a lot of great stuff coming. We have a whole community uh, for, from, for from the field now. You can go in and get to know other members who are really hardcore about farming and homesteading. Make those connections that are becoming more and more important as this sort of countdown to tyranny continues. But uh, yeah, if you guys liked this video, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you aren't, share the videos with your friends. We'll see you guys in the next one.